Hello and welcome back to another World of Warcraft Classic Professions Gold Making video. Today we are covering Engineering, which is a bit of a different profession that a lot of people might not think of as a gold making profession, but I am here to inform you that there is quite a bit of gold to make from this if done right. In my opinion, it's probably not the best profession for gold making, but it's definitely up there and it could make you a lot of gold if you do it right. In this video we will cover th different things you can craft, what it's used for and why it can be good for gold making. In general I think engineering is a great profession because it is really useful both for PvP and PvE, so if you can actually make good gold from it as well it might just be the best profession out there and it might be considered a jack of all trades, being excellent or at least decent at a bit of everything. When it comes to PvE, it gives you an advantage in forms of bombs and stuns, CC and mind control, and in PvP you can sap targets, root targets, stun them, you get different movement speed increase and you can slow enemies, and there's just tons of fun stuff to do, and it will alter the way you play your class to a huge degree. Alright, with all this said, I think we should just get into some of the engineering gold making crafts, so here we go. First off we have the Deadly Blunderbuss, it's used for a quest in Ashenvale and can be used to get yourself some decent gold especially at launch when everyone is trying to complete quests as fast as possible and are willing to throw some fast money to complete their quests fast. P.S. This quest is for Horde only and therefore making gold through selling this item heavily favours the Horde. Next up we have the Copper Modulator, which is needed for Dark Moon Fair tickets. You get one ticket per five items and it can only be completed once. Green Fireworks also needed for the Dark Moon Fair tickets and you get eight tickets per 36 items and it can only be completed once. Mechanical Repair Kits also needed for Dark Moon Fair tickets and you get 12 tickets per six items and it can only be completed once. Next up you have Thorium Widgets which is needed for Dark Moon Fair tickets and you get 20 tickets per 6 items and it's repeatable. Next up we have the Flame Deflector, it absorbs 500 fire damage, has 5 charges and it's situationally used by Twinks or people minimaxing survivability of fire damage either in dungeons or raids. The recipe can be bought from a vendor and you don't need engineering to use this. Aqua Dynamic Fish Attractor. It increases your fishing skill by 100 for 5 minutes. Ice Deflector absorbs 600 frost damage, has 5 charges, and is used situationally by Twinks or people min maxing survival of frost damage. Discombobulator Ray transforms the target into a gnome and reduces their melee and spell damage by 40 and reduces their movement speed by 20% and it also does not require engineering to use. Needless to say, this item is insane in PvP. Gyrochronoton, I'm not sure if I said that right, but it's an item used for quests in Badlands. Advanced Target Dummy is used for quests in Desolus, and Unstable Trigger is used for quests in the Eastern Plaguelands. Make sure you sell these in stacks of 8 for more profits since this is the stacks they're needed for. High Explosive Bomb also used for quests in the Eastern Plaguelands and you should also sell these in stacks of 8. Goblin Sapper Charge, it's just awesome and it's going to be used by many engineers in Classic and many might choose to buy them instead of farming materials and crafting it themselves. Mithril Casing is needed for quests in the Ungora Crater. Green Lens is the best in-slot headpiece for engineers. Frozen Wrath, Shadow Wrath and Healing are the best prefixes that sell the best. Salt Shaker, leather workers need these to make refined deep rock salt. Next up we have Thorium Shells, which is our ammunition for hunters. These can be exchanged for Thorium Arrows in Orgrimmar and Ironforge. Delicate Arcanite Converter, used in tier 0.5 quest chain, however this will probably not be relevant before later phases, probably phase 5. Gnomish Netomatic Projector, a trinket that's bound on a quip that will net enemy targets. 
useful in PvP or kiting scenarios and will sell to other engineers who are lazy and don't want to farm their own materials. Engineering has lots of cool gadgets like this, some of which are sellable, some of which are soulbound. Thorium Rifle, a very decent level 47 gun for hunters. Many hunters in this level bracket are looking for weapon replacement and crafting this can be a good gold maker, especially at launch if you can get the materials to make a lot of guns for when the majority of people hit level 47. Likewise, engineers can make a lot of weapons for a lot of different level brackets, so selling weapons can definitely be a good gold maker. Field Repair Bot 74A this is obviously a repair bot and most guilds will probably already have engineers dedicated to getting the recipe for this, but it might still sell well to semi-hardcore guilds or even to people who regularly pug raids. Definitely worth picking up as it will increase the items you can throw up on the auction house which will also help you make more gold over time. Next up we have the Arcane Bomb, a massive area of effect bomb that both deals damage and drains mana, used in both PvE and PvP but mostly for PvP. This can be sold as many people might not bother farming their own materials and crafting their own bombs so they might just try to buy these on the auction house instead, could be a potential gold mine. Lastly, if you're a raider, you might end up getting these three recipes in Molten Core which will make you even more gold, especially if you're the first or one of the first to obtain the recipe on your server. First off, you have the Bisnex 24-7 X128 Accuroscope, which grants plus 3% hit on ranged weapons which will sell extremely well. The Force Reactive Disc, which is an AoE tanking shield which might sell well, but it depends and it's situational. The last one is Core Marksman Rifle, a good rifle that some might buy, however most hunters choose to stick with items like Black Crow until they get the quest item for Rock Delar. As you can see, there are a lot of different ways to make gold with engineering and it really has some potential when it comes to gold making. You can make steady gold while leveling by selling items needed for quests in various zones for people to get easy experience by buying your item and turning it in. At max level you can create items that people use in PvP, PvE or just raw weapon upgrades or ammunition. You can also craft items needed in max level quests like the items for the Dark Moon Fair tickets which is a steady gold maker throughout all of Classic which is really handy. Also, as an engineer, you will sell a lot of items based on others being lazy, so for example, you have two options. You can either buy the materials off of the auction house and craft the item for a somewhat small profit, or you can farm the material yourself, which will take way more time but also yield way more profit. Find whatever works best for you, what gives you the most profit, and what you find most enjoyable. For me, I'd rather make 10 gold per hour doing something I enjoy than making 50 gold per hour doing something I hate. So I would probably go out and farm materials until that becomes boring and then switch to buying materials. The whole premise of engineering making money off of people being lazy is because engineering is not the typical gold making profession and most engineers will go engineering because it will enhance their gameplay. Pro PvE and PvP players will have lots of gold on their hand anyway and will be willing to pay others to do their profession work so they can focus on what they enjoy and what they need to spend their time on. And that's where you can make tons of profit. Engineering is all about being creative whenever you see an opportunity. Other ways engineers can make gold is by simply crafting bombs and vendoring or auctioning them, whatever makes you the most profit. This is to burn off leftover ores and you should only do this if it makes you more gold than you would make if you sold the ores or bars on the auction house. As a quick summary, I would say engineering is an excellent profession as it's a hybrid of everything. It's useful in PvE, it's useful in PvP, and it's useful in gold making. It certainly is the best profession in PvE and PvP, but whether or not it's the best in gold making we'll have to wait and see. I still think alchemy and enchanting are better options, but there might also be a lot more competition on making gold with those profession, while gold making with engineering might be less competitive. So there it is, my engineering gold making guide for classic. Engineering is a profession I have never really tested out myself when it comes to vanilla, private servers or the beta, so this is all kinda new to me. 
I did reach out to a couple of people on Discord to get some of this information and did some research on Wowhead to add some extra information as well and to confirm that the information I had received was correct. I do hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. If there's anything you feel like I missed or if there's anything you'd like to add feel free to leave a comment down below as I really do read every single one and I really appreciate any type of feedback on these videos. If you enjoyed this video please take the time to slap a like on it and if you want to see more from me feel free to click that subscribe button as well. That's it for now, I'll see you next time.